Welcome to the Story Fulfilled Podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible comes together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Fletcher. I'm Abby. And I'm Jay. And today's story is about Atha- Athaliah. Uh, Athaliah. Should we do that again? Oh, well, we're already started. We've already. <laughs> Athaliah. <laughs> or Athaliah. We've already mentioned a number of Athalia times. Athaliah is an interesting pronunciation. I think right. Athaliah sounds prettier than Athaliah. 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 We've mentioned a number, a number of times that we are not the podcast to go to if you want to nail <laughs> pronunciations. pronunciations. We're not so. a linguistics podcast. That's it. We should That's have Josh it. on. We should. No. <laughs> we should get him on here. Uh, so... Today, with that, uh, we will find out later that she had some famous parents, mm-hmm. and so she was the daughter, actually, of super villains. Super so. villains. So the question for today, we have actually two parts, because we've got children and parents going on here. So which child of a celebrity is the most overrated, Are we in doing your opinion? Yeah, we'll questions? do that one first, and then okay. we'll go to the next one. We'll go, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going first, because I don't want Jay to steal my answer. <laughs> Um, I thought we were going to do a group answer on this. Oh, one. are we doing a group answer? Okay. Well, you, you can say like one, I'll say the other, and then you can say <laughs> the other. There's like six, though. We'll the Kardashians class. slash Jenners. Who do you think? Kendall? Yeah, Who's the them. most, though? The most. Chloe, related. Kim. Kim. I don't know. The, Chloe, Kim, Kendall, Kylie. Kylie. I guess it would be who has done the least for mm. the, the world, Rob. Right? Like some, Rob. Some of them have, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what Rob Because some of them have designed clothes or mm-hmm. makeup mm-hmm. and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, they've done stuff. <laughs> right. I remember I worked at camp a couple summers, and on a weekend when like the campers were away and we were having like a staff hangout, there was this one girl that I worked with. She was a camp counselor, and she was so excited to go back to her trailer and watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. And I'm like, I've never seen the show. Reality TV can kind of be funny, <laughs> so I sat with her and I tried to watch it. And I honestly, after five minutes, I'm like, How do people watch this? Like. It's the whole time they're just talking. I don't know how to cut a cucumber, and I'm like, what the heck is there's this? There's a there's a meme that I like, and it's of Kylie Jenner. It's like a before and after pic, yeah. and it's like she's this big uh, makeup tycoon, and she sells this lipstick. Oh, you know, you can have lips like me, and then it shows her before and after, and she's had like the biggest lip injections oh. in the world, Anyways. and the lipstick. No amount of lipstick is going to make you no. look like Kylie yeah. Jenner's yeah. lips. Yeah, yeah. sorry, Kylie. Yeah, yeah. Go over. I hope had, she doesn't listen. Or I hope she does. But you, well, we'll see. There you go. Uh, you had someone else, though. Oh, yeah. Well, thought? I was going to go with uh, the Smiths. Maybe Jaden Smith. Jaden Smith. I did like Karate Kid, though, so I don't want to diss, yeah. him, diss him too much. And Willow had that really rocking song. I went yeah. my hair back and forth. I went my hair back <laughs> and forth. Yeah. Which neither of you guys can appreciate. Well, yeah. Because you're both bald. I, well, I used to have long hair. <laughs> I was recently on a roller coaster and my beard flew into my mouth, which was <laughs> fun. <laughs> wow, that's something to be proud of, Jay. Yes, yes. I was like, <laughs> I didn't actually know. Enough. I didn't even know what was going on until I put two and two together later. I was like, oh, that was my beard. You okay. thought it was like the that's woman in front of you. Like, what and... you in my mouth? It's my beard. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Okay. Uh, so I whipped my hair back and forth. <laughs> on roller coaster. On roller coaster. On roller coaster. And your beard. Uh, so I was gonna. I had like another overrated, but it's more. It's more that actually, her father was overrated because mm. I, I was like Miley Cyrus, but because like, uh, but she's just a train wreck at a point. One point in time, she's she was doing just yeah. Now. She's doing much better now. But her dad is one of the most overrated musicians. I, I want to be honest. I think it's like the opposite. Abby was talking about was it Nepo Baby? I think it's Nepo, Nepo Daddies. Babies. Yeah, <laughs> because Miley Cyrus was on her TV show. Yeah, she did yeah, all yeah. her music. She's Hannah Montana. Right. Her dad okay. did like one, you know, one, one song. song. He, yeah, but he had a good voice, and he was very funny on the TV he was. show. Yeah. I, yeah, he was the best character on that show. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll rethink my answer later. But <laughs> well, Jay didn't. Jay didn't watch Hannah Montana. It's clearly, yeah. it, well, there's. I think your kids are a little some, past some that, age. Yeah. Yeah. So, one of the things that we're uncovering is that there's this like parent-child relationship going on here with the celebrities. So, the second question is, which celebrity would you want as a parent? Can I go now, first again? we love our parents. We'll just yes, be clear. Yes. Some of them listen very yeah. faithfully, so we don't want to <laughs> offend anybody. Yeah. 
But if we had to have other parents, who would we choose? Yes, I love my parents very much, and they I would still choose them if I did if I had to pick somebody. But they're not necessarily celebrities. Yes, exactly. Um, but if I had to pick celebrities to be to be my parents, I would pick <laughs> Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. Oh, interesting. Because they are hilarious, and also I think they're just really good parent parents. And she's best friends with Taylor Swift. Oh, there you go. There's, there's always, <laughs> and Taylor um, Swift wrote songs about her kids. See, so. Abby is always trying to reduce those six degrees of Taylor Swift yeah. separation. She wants to be one, to degree one degree from degree. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Besties. There we go. I'm struggling to think of celebrity couples, so okay, uh, go well, for it. Well, it doesn't have to be a couple. I'm thinking um, Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Okay. For sure. Wait. From Overboard. From Well, they've done a number of movies together. They were Mr. and Mrs. Claus. Oh, I, I haven't seen that as one. As well. I've seen um, Overboard. And and they they cottage in the Muskokas. They're on oh, Lake Ross. Wow. They, uh, my sister was working at Muskoka Woods when th- I believe their children went to Muskoka Woods. Um, and so I'm just like, you guys, they're, they've been together forever. They're a wholesome couple. They make good movies, make semi mediocre movies (laughs) uh, together. And yeah, yeah. Love them. Wait, are they actually married? Yeah. Okay. Don't they have a kid? A famous kid? Well, you Uh, can be siblings. I don't know about famous. They definitely do. Definitely went, like I said, went to Muskoka Woods when they were younger. As far as I remember hearing, <laughs> I don't want to say they that They definitely wrong. do. I'm going to Google it. Um, yeah. So while Abby Googles that, Fletcher is... Gosh. Kate Hudson. Uh, Kate Hudson's their kid. Okay. Yeah. You want to wow. be sisters? Siblings with Kate Hudson? There you go. I mean, Siblings <laughs> with Kate Hudson. <laughs> I guess. Okay. All right. I think I've thought of it. And it's for the meme of the show. I'm going to go with Phil Vischer. <laughs> the Veggie Tales. Uh, oh, my goodness. What's it called? What, the but, yeah, the Veggie Tales the... mogul. That's right. And you <laughs> Phil know what? Vischer. He would probably sing you your own silly saying. song yeah, for bedtime. Sing me a silly every song night. with me. Yeah. Instead with Larry. One of yeah. these days, I'm going to write you your own silly song, Fletcher. Oh, okay. Well, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to the show. Phil Vischer Phil. is my answer, and that, and that's that. Phil, if you ever listen to our podcast, can you just <laughs> reach out to us and let us know? Because we love you. <laughs> so we'd love to hear your answer to either of these questions. Let us know on our social media, uh, on Instagram, at Story Fulfilled Podcast, or uh, email us story for the podcast story at, at bfmc.org. BFMC. Yes. yes. Um, and yeah, so as we jump into the story, as always, we do encourage you to read the stories for yourselves in order to get the whole picture of what is going on. And today's story takes place in Second Kings and Second Chronicles, which, as we've mentioned before, is kind of Second Chronicles is a retelling of Second mm-hmm. Kings and. Just kind of recapping what has what has gone on. Yeah. So for people thinking of it as like, why would they need to do that? Just think about like another account, right? Yeah. Like it's good just to have. And some it was backup it was written and... at a different time as well. So Second yeah. Kings was written closer to the time of the kings, and then Chronicles right. was rewritten for the people who had just come back uh, from captivity in right. in Babylon. And Chronicles was basically telling the story of God's people, and then eventually coming back yep. to yeah. the promised land. Which yeah. So they both serve different purposes. Purpose. Yeah. yeah. One of these days, we should do a special episode on like biblical canon and why mm. that matters. Mm. Very interesting. So. That Stay tuned if for that, that. If you're interested in that, let us know yeah, and sure. we'll do it. Yeah. So the background today, it's actually it's pretty easy because we're, we're kind of just picking up from where we left off last week. And so today we're talking about uh, Athaliah or Athalia. I like Athalia. Athalia. I like Athalia, Athalia too. Uh, so she was the daughter of King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. The super That's villains. Super villain super couple. Yeah. And uh, the granddaughter then of King Omri. And she was the queen of Judah. Oh. Uh-huh. So last week we talked about Jezebel and Ahab. So you know their background. And today we're going to give you a bit of the family tree of today's story because it involves well you got to keep track of names here some of them are a little close to each other 
And and remember, this whole thing started with the Jeroboam and Rehoboam, which names are hard. It's like, already hard enough. Confusing. Man, it, it's good to read the Bible with a pen and paper in hand to write things <laughs> down to keep notes. Or as so, I do, I just always Google family tree, family right, tree, family right. tree. You should see my search history. Which you There's did earlier with the Jenners trees. and Ken. I did. I had it open. <laughs> Makes it clear. That's right. So starting with Israel, we got Ahab and Jezebel, and they had three children that we know of. Uh, Ahaziah, Joram, and Athaliah. And Ahaziah falls out of a window and dies from the injuries. So, sorry, <laughs> hey, That's very similar to how his mom died. Long. Right? Fell oh, out of a right. window. That's Look right. at that. I think it was before his mom died, though. But it's still Maybe it's both the same. Yeah. And he also had a run-in with Elijah. Wow. Right? In, in Elijah that. visited him and said, you're not going to survive this window fall, <laughs> essentially. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. With that right? One. Yeah. So um, Athalia married Jehoram, the king of Judah. So she's come down from the north, and yeah. and now she's married the king of Judah, and named they named their son after her brother Ahaziah. Just to make it more complicated, it's the same name, same name, different, different guy. Person. Hey, you know what? You can't speak Fletcher because your mom named you after her maiden but, name. But I'm not in a big political <laughs> plot, luckily, so, trying to remember names. Same name, different Fletcher, guy. Fletcher, Fletcher. Fletcher, Fletcher. Fletcher. Um, and so Joram was king after his brother died and was injured in a war against Aram. And then when Jehu, who is somebody that we talked about last week, went to Jezreel... To kill Jezebel, he also <laughs> killed King Joram and King Ahaziah, so who genies. was visiting his uncle at the time. <laughs> I mean, yes, a lot. just story a lot dynamics laying on top of one another there. So, so when our story starts, Athalia is the only family member that is left. And mm. as for Judah, we have King Jehoram, the son of King Jehoshaphat. And he's married to Athaliah, or Athaliah, uh, the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. And their son uh, is Ahaziah, and their daughter is Jehoshiba, which also <laughs> sounds a lot like Jehoshaphat. Uh, and she's married to a priest named Jehoiada. Jehoiada, yeah. We will quiz you all on that. Have I you think we're going to put a, we'll not a necessarily button. a family tree, but a list of kings of Israel and yeah. the dates because I have the history here and I'm just going to give you the years but we're going to have a chart with the list of kings of Israel and Judah right beside each other with the times so you'll kind That'd of be... understand hopefully if you read that we'll get that alongside in the show to notes. listening Fletcher's yeah. gonna send to this podcast that. which is a lot of names and a lot of similar names yeah. <laughs> anyway so yeah it takes place basically at the same time as as last week's episode so the same time period of history if you go back to last week's episode you hear the history that's going on then Uh, So basically, I'm going to tell you who reigned when and where. Uh, So in Israel, which is the northern kingdom, King Ahab reigned from 874 to 853 BC. His son Ahaziah reigned from 853 to 852 BC. One whole year. His brother Joram reigned from 852 to 841 BC. And then Jehu, who we talked about, is the captain and he rebelled. Yeah. Because he was anointed by God. He reigned from 841 to 814 BC. Mm -hmm. And those are the dates for the kingdom of Israel. For the kingdom of Judah, we have Jehoshaphat, who reigned from 870 to 848. Uh, His son, Jehoram, reigned from 848 to 841. And then his son um, reigned for for less than a year uh, before his mother, Athaliah, reigned from 841 to 835. Yeah. So along with those dates... I. I think I have a document that actually also pairs up the prophets who spoke mm. during the I time. I think we have a similar document. We'll, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll send it to the... Yeah, so that actually just Bible. helps even when you're reading the Bible to know Absolutely. Who, who is being spoken to and of. Yeah, so for geography, today's story takes place in the capital of Israel, which is... Jerusalem. Oh, Samaria. Oh, guys, oh, sorry. I was going to be like Dora there and let them have the answer oh. and then... Then get all excited when they answered it. Let's try again. Okay. So, 
<laughs> this today's story takes place in the capital of Jerusalem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're giving up. It's Congratulations story. if you got it right. We're taking place in Jerusalem. It's the map. It's the map. map. It's, it's the map. map. It's, it's a good the map. A, and, swiper no swiping. <laughs> oh, swiper no. It has parts in Jezreel. And last week we talked a little bit about, does Jezreel, uh, was it named after Jezebel? The answer is no. Right. It Aww. was not. I know. Sorry, Fletcher. Too bad. But Sounds did, really similar. I did learn that the first son of the prophet Hosea was named mm-hmm. Jezreel. And it was a reminder of the bloodshed that happened at Jezreel, okay. which oh. is kind of interesting. So it kind of relates later on. If you maybe we should do a Hosea episode one day. Mm. It's super interesting. But yeah, so that's kind of cool. And this was at the palace that was built by Ahab. So by her dad in the Valley of Jezreel. Mm-hmm. So we start today's story with the death of King Ahaziah. And he was the king of Judah and the daughter of Athaliah. Ahaziah had been following the footsteps of his grandparents, Ahab and Jezebel, doing evil in the sight of the Lord is the repeated phrase throughout the book of mm-hmm. Kings. Which often grandkids follow in their right. grandparents' True. footsteps sometimes. So he's the king of Judah. And because of his mother's influence, Athaliah, who was again Ahab and Jezebel's uh, daughter, mm-hmm. he was really wicked and he was just following again in the footsteps of Ahab's family. He even yeah. made uh, members of Ahab's family his counselors. If you remember... Ahab was from the kingdom of Israel, right. and he is now, uh, ah- Ahaziah is the king of Judah. So this is a different kingdom, but the family from up north is now reigning, essentially, in the south as well. Yeah, so after his death, we talked about, uh, there was no suitable male heir, and uh, his brother has been killed, his, his son has been killed uh, by a band of Arab marauders. Anyway, so we get Athaliah as the first and only female reigning monarch in Israel's history. Athaliah. Good for her. Good for her. And she, well, <laughs> it could have been good. Could for have her. been good for her. It turns out she wasn't the best herself, having a lot of influence from her parents, Ahab and Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she ends up killing the rest of the Judean royal family. Uh, this is kids. This is parents. This is cousins. This is everybody that could threaten her reign as queen right she took out yeah so she was not the greatest herself so she she killed basically the entire family uh, in order to protect her reign as queen which is this is something that was common among many other kingdoms like this is actually common practice not typically among those who seek to be called god's people yeah (laughs) but uh, yeah. Something that happened. Often. It's a politically strategic move. Yeah. yeah. But if we're, we're talking about people that were set apart by God, and that's not what they were supposed to be mm-hmm. doing. <laughs> anyway, so without her knowledge, without the queen's knowledge, a woman named Jehoshiba, who we talked about a little bit earlier, she was the daughter of King Jehoram, but she was uh, n- uh, the husband of Athalia, but it wasn't Athalia's daughter. So it was her stepdaughter, essentially, or from another wife. Right. Um, she actually saved one of the, the grandkids, um, one of Ahaziah's infant sons, and his name was Joash. Mm-hmm. And he hid, or she hid him in the temple with her husband, whose name is Jehoiada. They like J's back in the Jehoiada. day. Holy cannolis. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Jehoiada and Jehoshiba have now hid <laughs> Joash in the temple of the Lord, protecting uh, the only heir to the throne, uh, saving her from Athaliah's uh, murderers basically right. and she ends up keeping uh, keeping him there for seven years and now the story basically cuts and then it jumps to seven years later and it talks about actually during that reign uh, Athalia continued on the same ways that her father and mother did evil in the sight of the Lord she was not a good good queen at the time so mm-hmm. seven years later uh, Jehoiada who is this priest gathered the captains of the king's guard and these men who were like uh, through descendants were servants of David and they were the guards. He gathered them all and then he showed them Joash saying, you know, this is the only heir left of the throne of Judah. He's the next king. And so they made them make a covenant and took all these guards and armed them with weapons from the temple. It talks about how their weapons that David's guards used. Um, And they crowned him king and they made them promise to serve this guy as king, Joash. Right. Uh, So they've swore this oath. And now he set guards on them. He basically set these guards around the temple. He hatched this coup. Look, we're going to have to overthrow the queen somehow. He got all the guards to protect the temple. He armed them and then anointed the king, Joash, um, in the temple. And he's the the priest who did that. Right. Uh, So now Jehoiada, he puts a crown on Joash's head. And it says that he gave him a copy of the law or the copy of the testimony. 
um, which is actually following uh, a Deuteronomic law that really wasn't followed uh, in the kingdom of Judah or Israel. And he was given, the king was given a copy of the law and to write and to read and to memorize. Uh, and Jehoiada uh, annou- announces him as king and the people all greet him with trumpets. Mm-hmm. And there's a slight problem is that uh, the queen finds out about this. Queen She's Athalia. still the queen. <laughs> She's still the queen. She hears this and she runs down to the temple. Um, and, you know, treason, treason. This is, this is against the queen. Obviously, Jehoiada has already dealt with this. He's got the queen's guard. He's got the king's guard. He's got all the guards and the captains on his side yeah. with a covenant with them. Um, and so Jehoiada's in control of the situation and he says, look, anybody who's now following the queen, put them to death and then send the queen away and put her to death. And he does that and she's killed right outside the door of the, the, the palace. Right. Um, after the queen's death, uh, Jehoiada brings King Joash and sets him on the, the throne and everybody celebrates There's trumpets and he actually makes a covenant between God and Joash the king and the people and that they would once again be God's people and would actually follow him. He also instituted different religious reforms. Uh, he said, go tear down the, the temple of, of Baal and destroy the idols there and, and turn the people back towards God. Right. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's the story of Athalia and her grandson, King Joash. She was nasty, man. She was nasty. Well, that's the that's the theme of this I guess that's season kind of the point is of the antagonists. Right. antagonists. So, and, and, yeah. how does the story of Athalia mm. come together to tell and fulfill the story of God throughout the rest of the Bible? That's a good question. So, Thank Jehoiada, I, I had n- honestly I'd never heard the name Jehoiada before, and he's kind of the hero of this story. If we have an antagonist in Athalia, we have the protagonist in <laughs> Jehoiada. Right. Jehoiada is this guy, and he as a priest, him and his wife really stood out and, and went out of their way to save, first of all, the king, Joash. Yeah. And then after they saved the king, he went back to the law and, and instituted how God originally had it planned. And he really pushed the people back to following God. And he did everything kind of in the right order, in the right way, and successfully brought the people back to God for at least a time. Yeah. And I, 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 that's an admirable thing to do in Jehoiada. Yeah, exactly. Just like you, I had never heard of this uh, story before, actually. I, I mean, I I probably read it, yeah. but it just didn't stick in my mind as something that... It's not exactly a Sunday school story. It's not a Sunday school story, right? Well, you'd think it would be. That's that's why I'm confused. It's because it has a nice ending to it. Right. It has the, the people of God coming back to him and following him once again. It has a really a nice yeah, ending. Yeah, almost like this this uh, nice build-up climax, mm-hmm. this point of tension, and mm-hmm. then and we see... Well, there you guys go. You guys can volunteer to teach Sunday school one week, and, <laughs> and we're you can tell this story. This murderous <laughs> political plot that led to... What did yeah. you learn in Sunday school? I don't know. There was a lot of J's, that's all I A lot know. of J's, a lot of killing. <laughs> Yeah, um, but what we see is a commitment to the Lord, uh, standing above. Like he didn't use political means mm-hmm. to fight against this wicked queen. He simply sought to honor the Lord and protect the Lord's anointed. And I'm I'm curious if he knew the prophecy that had mm-hmm. been uh, already spoken, as mm-hmm. as we'll talk about, um, as this was you know, the, the fulfillment of the prophecy from last week mm-hmm. that Ahab's house would be destroyed. And so I wonder if he knew that and just knew I need to uh, just continue to stand for God and to protect this child and um, just have God's word come to fulfillment. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And another thing that I've kind of, well, since I've, we started the podcast, we really read through the Old Testament a lot. And something I noticed throughout the book of Kings especially is that priests, although they have been set apart to do that priestly role, they didn't follow God just like everybody else didn't follow God. A lot of them turned to other gods. They turned to Baal. They set up, you know, idols all over the place. Uh, We see that uh, in the time of Elijah, especially like there's only a couple prophets of God left and the priests have basically abandoned God. Uh, but this guy, who wasn't necessarily a prophet, he was just a priest that knew the law yeah. and knew his role in it and followed it, which and I it, find really cool. And insisted on passing the law down. Mm-hmm. And that's Absolutely. that's also just a key in if we want to see the younger generations continue to follow the Lord, we need to be continually in 
teaching them, instructing them in the Bible, and exposing them to the Word of God, making it a, a place of importance in, in their lives because that is how we encounter God. That's where, yeah. we, that's where we meet him. Jehoiada, he wasn't even the guy's, he wasn't even Joash's real father. Right. But he raised him. And it makes me think of, uh, what's his name? He makes me think of Joshua and Samuel. It's like, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, and Jehoiada really put that into place. Like it wasn't even his son, right. but he raised this guy to be following God. Uh, and it was really of importance in his house. And mm. I, it's, that's an important thing. I'm not a, not a father, but I think that that is one of the most important things of being a father is to raise your kids to know God and know his word. Yeah, to, to at least give them the opportunity to meet with mm-hmm. God, right? Because it's, I can't, and we know that like as a parent, I can't manufacture a relationship for my children to have with God but I can continue to point them to God and have all the resources available yeah, when they're ready to, to, to position them yeah. to, to hear from him and to be in, uh, invited into that, to hear that invitation mm-hmm. into relationship with God. Well, thank you for tuning in today. It was great to see you. We actually have, I have one shout out. My cousin Alex got married this week. So Woo-hoo. congratulations, Woo-hoo. Alex and Dasha. Thank you for being faithful supporters of the podcast yeah. and listeners. Awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Congrats. Okay. Thanks for listening. Well, that's all we have for today. (laughs) Bye for now. Bye.